welcome to the Coach Randy Jackson Show. I'm Kip Ewing, president of Booster Club. I'd like to first thank our sponsor, Kim Asad, from Kim Asad DFW Realty Associates. If you're looking for a home or know someone who needs to sell a home or buy a home, Kim Asad's your contact person for that. She does a great job for many of the families here in Grapevine. Uh, we just uh, finished week seven. Coach, um, we finished week seven with a five and two record and we're going into uh, week number eight, which is our off week. Uh, so this will be a little bit of an abbreviated show. We'll talk about the Dunbar game, and then next week we'll start off talking about uh, Carter Riverside, uh, which is our, our next uh, opponent. So, Coach, um, you know, we went into this game. It was a big game for the program because this was a game last year that really, I think, uh, put an impact, a negative impact on the program, and this was something that, you went into this game, we had to have this football game. What are your overall comments? Yeah, this is one that, that we probably talked about Dunbar. Well, I know we did. I mean, there's no – in December and January, and and when you're talking to your team in off season and you're trying to tell, you know, tell them why we're working this hard and all, Dunbar came out of my mouth more than anybody else. I just felt like they uh, – I mean, they're winning – it was 58-40 with a minute left, and they go for two to make it 60. And, and uh, we were treated bad at times last year by more than one school. But if I could just say who treated us the worst, it'd probably be Dunbar. And, uh, and and I felt like it's a game we should have won last year. So there's a lot of reasons that that it'd be easy to say it was just another game. It's a district game and all, but it really was. It really wasn't just another game. It's one of those that uh, we had circled and and. We needed to, uh, I not only didn't want to win it, but I wanted to make a statement, mm -hmm. and I was proud that I think we made a statement. Well, it was homecoming. We had a lot of alumni, uh, kids from last season's football team that uh, you're mentioning about last year's game uh, were in attendance. They, they came and spoke to the team before the game, and I know after the game, those kids are very excited about a 55-13 to 13, uh, final score uh, against the Dunbar Wildcats. But, you know, we always talk about Everybody participating, everybody getting involved in the football game. We had, you know, long passes thrown. We had good runs. Brandon Coffin did a wheel route that was just a beautiful execution. But the one touchdown I want to talk about and point out is the big guy, number 43, Brian Andrews, scooped for a touchdown. That had to be just a real exciting moment for him in the defense. Yeah, and what a great way to, I think it was the first drive of the game, period. And so, you know, we talk to our team so much about the first five minutes of each half, how just important that first five minutes is. So for them to put the ball on the turf and us to scoop and score and, and talk, I mean, we've got three parents who take pictures. We have, the, the best picture of the year are pictures of Brian Stiffarm and uh, some Dunbar, a poor kid from Dunbar. I mean, he was going to get in the end zone. And uh, I mean, he was like a bull that wasn't going to be denied. And, and so, uh, yeah, I was proud for him. I'm always proud. You know, our def all, all our captains this week were defense because we really had – I mean, we gave 60 points to them last year. And so uh, uh, we knew it was a big deal for our defense, and they played great. And Brian started us off with a touchdown. Yeah, and one thing that was really interesting, too, I don't think I've ever seen a punter field his own punt. The wind was really causing the Dunbar Wildcats problems uh, going uh, uh, towards the north end zone and the punter would punt the ball and actually go straight up in the air and he fielded his own punt. I don't know if you've ever seen that before. Yeah, that was the first time I'd seen it. You know, I'm not sure I have, but uh, we've lost, it's so funny, uh, of uh, six games, we've, I've only won one coin flip all year. And, uh, but I, so I kind of thought I was due to win one, and, and we won the coin flip, and we, we always want to take the win that first quarter so we're not digging ourselves out of a hole. And it was 20 to nothing at the end of that first quarter. I think the win really did bother them. Mm -hmm. And then the start of the second half, they gave us the win the third quarter. And uh, we were all a little bit surprised by that, that uh, they wouldn't have taken the win to, to try to dig themselves out of a hole a little bit. But our kids did a great job of, of holding them and pinning them down there where those punts were. I mean, our, I think our starting field position in the first half was probably on their 40-yard line or something. It was it was uh, short work for us. Yeah, it was certainly very favorable field position for sure. Well, again, great game. Uh, finished that this part of the season with a five and two record uh, going into the off week. I know uh, you always like to focus on those fundamentals to bring them back to. This is where we start, guys, with the fundamental blocking, tackling, and special teams. Uh, what do you got planned for the kids this week? We we always. This is a perfect week for us to have an open date because it's the last week of our grading period. So 
grades we can hammer on about their grades we always give them Monday off in the, on the open day and this Monday we didn't have school so we practice Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday full pads and uh, then we give them Friday it's, it's, it's like a, a weight film day and so tomorrow we'll scrimmage a little bit on Thursday and we'll watch it Friday but we're we're talking grades quite a bit we just have we just have we have Friday is a big day for us to finish grades up and uh, so yeah, we're we're focusing strictly on the Grapevine Mustangs this week, and and not on Carter Riverside. But uh, we'll flip that switch pretty quick on Saturday. We'll start on Riverside. We play them on on a Thursday, so it'll be a pretty quick week. Short week, yeah. But uh, you know, this is a week that uh, we're just like you say, we're we're going back to the fundamentals. But we break our season down into three sections. So we had three non-district games, and then we had you know uh, three district. Uh, Four non-district games, excuse me. We're two and one in district, uh, so we're ahead of where we were. I mean, this time last year we were one and six, and we were just trying to figure it out. So uh, we're in, we're in a lot better shape. We're two and one this year, and 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 honestly, we should be a playoff football team. And and so uh, I talked to the team, just joking with them the other day of you know we could just stop working now and. Everybody'd be happy with where we are, and then the bar wouldn't be so set so high. Maybe we could improve next year. And I said, or we can work hard and really win a bunch of games. So I'm trying to sell them on. Uh, I just kind of joking with them. Hey, let's just quit working and uh, let's just let this thing ride out. But you know, it's it's uh, 95 degrees today or whatever it is, and we just had a great practice. And so I'm proud of where we are. We just got to keep getting better every week. And just like last year, we got better every week. And uh, that's what we want our team to do this year, and that's what we're going to do. Well, if you were to ask me this time last year, sitting in this chair, we're one and six, we're five and two now, and have an opportunity to go eight and two as a great Mustang football team. I mean, this is a great accomplishment, Coach, and I know we have to finish it. I know that's what we're focusing in on is, is finishing the season with that eight and two record. That's certainly a great goal. Um, as I mentioned, this will be a rather abbreviated uh, Coach Jackson show. Uh, we will uh, talk about Carter Riverside uh, next week. But this week the kids are getting well. Uh, everybody's uh, focusing on the grades, as Coach said, and we just appreciate uh, you joining the Coach Jackson Show. I would like to thank uh, Shane Galford, who has been our video and editor for the Coach Jackson Show the entire year. He's done a tremendous job. He's responsible for the website. He's responsible for some communications that go out to the parents. And uh, he's been an invaluable asset to the Booster Club. So hats off to Shane Galford and his wife, who actually covers a media guide as well. Um, so on behalf of myself, Kip Ewing, our sponsor, Kim Assad, and Coach Jackson, thank you for joining us on the show this week.